who will watch the watchers? It's a cautionary expression that goes all the way back to ancient Rome. But now in our modern world, our devices that are watching and listening to everything, it's like never before. And some Princeton University researchers want to level the playing field. Whether you use Alexa, Amazon Echo, a smart refrigerator, or another smart home device, data on your actions is being transmitted. The Princeton team has created a new application to tell consumers where all that information is going. Their software monitors network activities, and it shows what data each device collects, who the device contacts online, and how much of the data is being exchanged, and how often. So what information are those devices gathering and who exactly has access to it? Ramona Pringle joins us now to help answer and make sense of some of this. She's the director of the Transmedia Zone at Ryerson University. Ramona, thanks so much for joining us. Honestly, it's, it's too much, it's too meta. Like everything <laughs> is being recorded, everything is being transmitted. We have to watch the watchers. Let's talk about these smart devices and what exactly are they gathering and for whom? You know, it's it's such a great point. And I think at this stage, we may not think that we live in smart houses. And yet, uh, you know, there's research that says, uh, you know, in the last few years in North America, there's eight connected devices or network connections per person. In the next couple of years, that's set to go up to 13. And it seems like a lot, but if you step back and think about it, let's say you've got a mobile device, uh, a laptop, and a tablet, there's three already. Maybe your camera or your printer is Wi-Fi enabled. Uh, maybe you've got a smart coffee maker. If you've got a game console or a smart TV, it's easy to see how this number climbs. And that's without even thinking about whether you've got an Echo or a, a virtual assistant, a home assistant like that in your house. And all of the, these devices are transmitting data. They're sharing information with different sources. And that's a lot of ambient information. The other thing to keep in mind about all of these smart devices is that most of them don't have screens. Now, we know people aren't that good at reading terms of service. They're really long. Uh, and even when you know they are in front of us, if it's, let's say, on a, a smartphone before you sign up to use it, we're not necessarily reading the fine print. But it becomes even more of a challenge when you think of some of these smart devices in our, that are in our homes where you know there isn't a screen and it becomes that much more difficult for the company to communicate with the user some of those policies, who they're transmitting information with, what third parties might be accessing the, the, the data that's collected from your home. Okay, so everything is being collected. And so as a result, you're going to talk to us about this app that essentially allows us to see what those third parties might be able to find out about us. How exactly does this work? Yeah, this is really neat. So this comes from a team of researchers at Princeton. It's called the Princeton IoT Inspector, and it's available for anyone to use. Right now, it's, I think, only available uh, for iOS users, but you can download it from their site. And once you've downloaded it, it will uh, scan your home network. It'll scan your network to see what devices are there. And again, because this is a research project that you're signing up for, you'll consent to their collecting the information because they're doing this to get a better sense of what's going on inside of our smart houses. The reality is this still very much is the frontier. It's happening very, very quickly. The consumer electronics market is racing ahead uh, where, you know, I think for us as users, there's a lot of novelty, there's a lot of convenience, certainly, but there also are concerns. And for a lot of people, it's not a matter of saying, well, just don't use these things, have a completely, you know, disconnected home. That's not necessarily the reality of the age that we live in. People have these concerns. So the researchers are setting about doing this study to try and find find out more about what, what are very opaque devices. They're not transparent in terms of discussing who they're sharing information with, where that information is going, how much information, what information. So there's a lot of question marks, and that's what they're looking to solve. If you're curious in figuring out what the researchers are curious to figure out, you can sign up for this study. You can participate and you know download this app, and in exchange, you can, you can figure out what's going on in your home as well. OK, I'm glad you brought that up, because at this stage, you can't actually purchase the app in a regular app online store, why not? Yeah, so this is, you know, in, in a way it's kind of funny, it's kind of ironic. It becomes, we're in this very murky gray territory about, uh, you know, what's right and what's wrong. The reason that this app isn't available in the app store, that the, the researchers didn't even attempt to get it into the app store, is essentially what you're doing is spying on a network. And, you know, the, this is against the terms of service of, let's say, the Apple App Store to spy on someone else's network. Of course, in this case, you're really just spying on your own network. You're just trying to get a little bit of insight into 
to what's going on in your own home. The technique that's used is called ARP spoofing, and most of the time it's used maliciously. It's used to be able to gain access to someone else's network, to be able to um, gain the information that might be going to them. So, you know, in a very roundabout way, there's something sort of Robin Hood about, about, about <laughs> this particular app, this particular tool, uh, but for now, you have to get it by going to the researcher's website. Okay, do you think that folks will be surprised by what this tool will tell them about their activities and who's accessing that information? I do. You know, I think that users, I think consumers are getting more and more savvy. Certainly, you know, when you, we, all of the conversations we have about Facebook and Google and Amazon and all of the information that's being collected and transmitted in this sort of data economy that we live in, I, I don't think anyone would be, would be surprised to hear that, you know, their echo is transmitting information to Amazon. I think that goes without saying. Uh, where I think people would be surprised are a few areas. The fact that there are many, many third parties uh, that, that data is also being transmitted to, and that that information is being transmitted to often even when we're not actively using devices. So for example, with an Echo, uh, an Amazon Echo device, I'm being careful really not to, to wake people's devices by <laughs> calling it by name. Uh, but with the Echo, uh, even when it's not active, even when the mic is disabled, it's constantly pinging servers. And Amazon explains this is really for a lot of routine maintenance tasks to make sure that it's uh, keeping the time, that it's got an internet connection, all the magic that has to go on, or all the, the sort of uh, housekeeping that needs to go on behind the scenes for these devices to do the, the magic magic that they do. Uh, and, and yet what that really means in practice, and this is what the this IoT inspector reveals, is that every few minutes it's pinging over a dozen different uh, different domains, and many of those aren't Amazon. And it is, you know, web hosting, and it is, um, you know, to check the time, and all these various services. Certainly, if you're using third parties like Spotify as well, it's pinging them as well. But it just means there's a lot more outlets, a lot more people potentially with access to your data or the data that's being transmitted by these devices than you might uh, than you might at first assume. Okay, Ramona, thank you so much. And before I let you go, I do want to mention to folks at home that if you want to learn more, Ramona has written a piece for cbcnews.ca. It's called, It's Time for Us to Watch. Apps let you spy on Alexa and the rest of your smart devices. Just go to cbc.ca, follow the links in the technology section. And there it is right there. Ramona Pringle joining us from Los Angeles. She's an associate professor at Ryerson University and the director of their Transmedia Zone. Thank you, Ramona. Thank you so much.